Hello everybody, welcome to Monday Morning Must Knows. My name is Merlin Rothfeld and here are several things to pay attention to for the upcoming trading week. Now obviously the first major piece is it's 4th of July on Thursday, which means markets will be closed, which means it's a very light trading week. Now what does this mean to you and me? Well, it means you should probably take Friday off as well, but because there are so many institutional players that take a short week, meaning they'll work maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and take the rest of the week off, or maybe even take the whole week off, what we get is less liquidity in the markets, fewer buyers and sellers. Now, at face value, you may think that the markets can be relatively flat and not a lot happening. That may be true, but because you have low liquidity, all it takes is one large order from anybody could move these markets and cause dramatic swings in volatility. So be careful on this week in any particular day just because volume will be lighter and you'll see that reflected in the price charts, but you may get some big moves. The safest thing to do, just don't trade it. Take some time off and enjoy your friends and family and that 4th of July holiday. All right, let's get to some data and news. Talk about Jerome Powell, chairman of the FOMC, will be giving some presentations. Oh, yes, one of which is at the European Central Bank. That's going to be a forum on central banking happening Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. Don't expect any big fireworks there from that presentation. However, you know, when Jerome Powell speaks, the whole world listens, and any little word could cause dramatic swings in price. Your next announcement, it's not really Jerome Powell by himself, it's really the FOMC meeting minutes. Now this is a recording and documentation of what the other members are thinking at the last conference. So essentially what we get is a look behind the curtain to see what the other members who are voting on interest rates and policy are thinking. And well, you know, we, we kind of have a general idea what they're thinking now, but should there be any outlying data or some comment that might trigger markets, you could get a lot of volatility right as that announcement happens. So be careful for that on Tuesday for this presentation and on Wednesday when we get the release of the FOMC meeting minutes. Moving on to data, we do have some employment data to speak of. We start things off with the Jolts job openings. That's going to be happening on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Not the biggest announcement. This one's much bigger happening on Wednesday, which is the ADP non-farm employment change. That's going to be at 8.15 a.m. on Wednesday, followed up closely by the unemployment claims, which normally happens on Thursday, but because the markets are closed on Thursday, they have decided to move this to 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday. And finally, on Friday, you have the unemployment rate and non-farm employment change, both happening at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, why is this important? Well, right now, the expectations are that we're going to stay at 4%. Stay right where it's at. No change. And this is a big talking track for Jerome Powell and the FOMC has been the unemployment rate. Remember, that's one of their dual mandates, full employment and stable prices. So 4% is historically pretty low with regards to unemployment rate, but if it does start to move up more, then they may be pressured to lower rates, which I'm sure many of you would be happy with because that might juice these markets. All right, let's go look at our final piece of information, which is a little bit different. A few weeks back, we talked about the EU elections and that, that shook the boat a little bit. And a lot of these countries had changes in their leadership, kind of like in the United States. When you go from a, let's say a Democratic president and all of a sudden we switch to a Republican president, Everybody's wondering, well, now what changes? How does our relationship trade? How does trade change? How does taxes change? So it shuffles the deck a little bit with regards to how those countries and their governments operate. Well, for us in the United States, we have a one party system. We really, you know, one, one government. But when you look at the EU, you have so many different governments that could create a lot of problems. And we saw since those elections in Europe, the euro has been falling pretty aggressively ever since then. Why do I bring this up? Because we have elections for the UK as well. There are the UK Parliament elections. There are 650 seats up for election here. Could shake things up quite a bit. And of course, that will just add volatility to those markets. So if you are trading the British pound or any British companies, just keep in mind this may have some impact and add a little bit of extra volatility to those specific markets. So that's pretty much it for this week. It should be a quiet one, although there may be some volatility because there aren't a lot of people gonna be trading this week. It's 4th of July week. I hope that you do something fun with your family and friends. Come back with all your digits so we can see you next week on Monday Morning Must Knows. Take care. We'll see you next week.